Hey guys, and welcome to the first uh, episode on creating a zombie wave shooter for virtual reality. So we're just going to have a quick look at our game design document. It's very basic. Um, so the summary is that it's going to be a first-person shooter with VR support where players survive waves of zombies. Between waves, players can buy weapons and attachments for their weapons, and the waves will get progressively harder and longer. And uh, these are the assets that I'm going to be using, uh, probably not in the first episode, but throughout the series. The Simple Apocalypse and Simple, simple Apocalypse Interiors um, kits by Sinti Studios, as well as the Zombie Starter mocap pack by Motion Capture Online, which I believe is free. And uh, all of these are on the Unreal Marketplace. The Simple Apocalypse series isn't free, though. Um, okay, so we're going to load Unreal Engine and go to New Project and create a first-person project. And we're going to change it from targeting desktop console to mobile tablet and maximum quality to scalable 3D or 2D. And uh, the reason for that is it makes it, it just adjusts the graphic settings. That makes it a lot better for VR. A lot of the settings you don't need, but you can change those later if you want. So we're going to name it Zombo VR and create this project without the starter content. We don't need that because we're going to be using the simple content, but you can use it if you'd like. And uh, in this first episode, we're going to figure out how to uh, make a few classes and apply damage to zombies. We're going to make a really basic zombie that'll chase the player. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to Edit, Project Settings, and we'll go to Input on the left and get rid of Use Mouse for Touch. And under Default Touch Interface, we're going to change it from Default Virtual Joysticks to Clear, and just clear that so it's None. Close that, save, and then it'll, we'll click on this button over here so we get a nice list. And uh, we're going to drag this Blueprints folder. Uh, sorry, we're just going to right click and do New Folder and name it Blueprints. And we're going to make a new folder in there and call it Characters. We'll make another new folder and we'll call it uh, Projectiles. And then from the first person BP folder, which is the folder that was created when we chose to make a first person shooter template, we're going to drag our first person character and move it to the characters folder. And same with the projectiles. Alright, so in the characters folder, we're going to right click, new blueprint class, and we're going to make it a character, and we're going to name it base zombie. We're going to load him up, compile and save. I'm just going to move the tab over here. Now, we don't have a model for the zombie yet, since we haven't added the starter kit, or, or the uh, simple apocalypse kit, but for now, we're just going to do add feature or content pack, and we're going to use the third person kit, and we're going to use the mannequin that that comes with to, uh, use our, to use as our zombie. So once we've done that, we can go back to our base zombie and click on mesh, and we can select the skeletal mesh, SK mannequin on the right here. Now just uh, drag him down. And then hit E so you can rotate him, or click up here, and rotate him so he faces the way the arrow faces, which is the forward vector of the character. Compile and save. And uh, now we can go to our characters folder and drag our zombie into the world, and uh, we can uh, go and shoot him. But there's a few issues. First, he's in T-pose, or A-pose, and second, the bullets fly through him. So we'll load him up. We're going to give him an animation blueprint. If it uh, loads up and you get that weird page, just hit uh, Open Full Blueprint Editor. So go to our viewport, click on Mesh, and under Use Animation Blueprint, we're going to select the animation class Third Person Anim BP, and compile and save. And that's just, we're going to make a custom animation blueprint later, but that's when we add the simple apocalypse stuff. So for now, we'll use that. All right. And then in Event Graph, actually, we'll go to our projectiles first. So in our projectiles folder, go to first person projectile, load that up. Now what it's currently doing is when it hits something, it checks if it simulates physics, and if it does, it adds an impulse and then destroys itself. Since our character doesn't simulate physics, it just flies through him. So what we're going to do is we're going to go drag off other, which is the thing that this bullet hits, and we're going to do cast to character. And we'll connect this. So what this does is it checks if the thing we hit is either a character or a sub class of a character, a child of a character, um, which our base zombie, remember we made our base zombie um, a character, and the first person character is obviously already a character. So if we hit a character, which uh, those things are, we're going to drag off this and do apply damage, and we'll make it uh, 30 damage for now, I guess. And then after that, we'll drag this to destroy actor, 
So if we hit a character, apply damage to him, 30 damage, and then destroy the bullet. If we don't, if it's not a character, that the cast fails, we'll go connect it back to here so it checks if it simulates physics. And if it does, it bounces. So we'll go into the world, hit play, and now our bullets, uh, oh right, they don't hit him because phase zombie, his mesh, is currently set to, um, to ignore pawns. So we're going to go custom and set it to block pawns instead. And we're also going to, this is for a bit later on, we're going to set this to a collision enabled quarry in physics. Compile and save. So now our bullets should... Yeah, they hit him and delete, I think. No, they're bouncing through him still. Oh, right, we set it on the wrong spot. We need to set it on the uh, the capsule collision, sorry. No, it's already set. Well... Oh, sorry, we need to set it on the projectile, not the zombie. I set it in the wrong spot, I'm sorry. So the collision, go to our projectile. And then go to the collision component and set its presets to uh, to block pawns. Right. So we can go back to our zombie and we can click. Uh, we still needed to do this, so that's fine. But uh, compile and save. Close these things. And now our bullets should actually delete when they hit them. Right. So we have that. So now let's make it so that uh, he dies. So we're going to load him up again. And we're going to do right click event any damage and then we're going to create a variable called health and make this a float Oops. compile and save so we can change it and we're going to make it 100 for now we'll make it editable so we can change it but uh, we're going to do set drag it into the world and do set and as well as drag it into the world and do get and off the get health we're going to do minus and then do float minus float and subtract the damage. So what this is going to do is we're going to get our current health, subtract damage, and set that to our new health. And off the current health, we're going to do less than or equal to zero, and then hold B and click to get a branch. So if our health is less than or equal to zero when we take damage, we're going to do a custom event. So right click custom event and name it death. So if our health is less than or equal to zero, that's true, we're going to call death. And when we call death, we're going to drag our mesh in, and we're going to do set simulate physics, and set that to true. And this is going to make our guy um, fall to the ground, I'll show you. Or he's going to block, fly away, that works too. Um, this does do, this does leave um, a little bug, which is that his capsule collision, I can actually show you by making it not hidden in game, is still going to be where it is. See, the actor technically still exists despite because we're just simulating physics on one of his components. So what we're going to do is uh, when we call death, we're going to get the capsule component, set collision response to channel, and we're going to set it to the channel pawn. We're going to set it to ignore so we can walk through it and our bullets can fly through it and it's basically just ignored. And um, I believe that's all we need to do. Let me make sure. Yeah, all right. So we can now kill our zombie. Um, but our zombie isn't very exciting yet. He doesn't actually do anything. So when we call death, we're gonna set another variable to, uh, to true, or sorry, false. We're gonna name this variable is alive. And by default, it'll be, whoops. By default, it'll be true. We'll compile and save. We'll drag that in, set. We're gonna set it to false when we die. Now we're gonna right click, tick, event tick. So uh, every frame, if uh, we are alive, we're gonna get that. We'll hit B and uh, click to get a branch. If we are alive, we're gonna get player pawn. We're gonna do, drag off that and do simple move to actor. And off controller, we're gonna do get controller. And then we'll connect that to true. So if we are alive, we're going to move to the player. Now I'm just going to drag a few zombies into the world so we can see what we mean. And then hit play. 
and it doesn't work and the reason it doesn't work is we don't have a nav mesh everyone always forgets that and by everyone i mean me and probably others so at the top left we're going to go search classes nav and get nav mesh balance volume drag it out of the world and set it scale to 500 by 500 by 500 and then hit p so you can see nav now this green stuff this green so it's basically like a fluid it um calculates pathing so now our zombies can come after us and we can kill them and whatnot and uh, for some reason they're still chasing us after we've uh hmm. oh it's because they don't stop the simple move until uh they're right so what we're going to do is when we set this is alive to false we're going to do stop all sorry drag the character movement in stop movement immediately and then uh, it'll stop walking. And we're gonna also drag and do set lifespan. And we'll set the lifespan to 10. So that'll delete itself after 10 seconds. We'll try this. Yeah, now they're not chasing after anymore. And after 10 seconds, they'll delete themselves. All right, so I think that's good for a first episode. Um, that's how you get zombies and shooting and all that. Uh, in the next one, we'll uh, expand this and make this a lot more in depth. So thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something, and uh, we'll keep going from here. Bye.